Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be looking at making a multi-sensor for Home Assistant. Okay, in previous videos we've looked at making uh, standalone sensors for things like uh, humidity, uh, motion and uh, light levels and for those we've been using these uh, ESP P8266 chips. We've been using them in the D1 mini package and we've also looked at it in the Node MCU package. Uh, and here's the example uh, of the uh, humidity sensor that we made in our last video. Now that's all great, but you probably won't want, you know, one of these for each individual sensor uh, around your house. You know, if you just had the sensors we've already made, that's three standalone. Uh, devices that you know need a Wi-Fi connection, need power, um, and will take space up uh, around your home as well. So today, what we're going to be looking at is putting all of the sensors we've made so far into one package to make a multi-sensor. And to do that, we're going to use one of these uh, project boxes. It's probably going to be a little bit rough. Um, this is just a the box will just be a prototype eventually I'm going to 3d print something um, but yeah we'll get started first by looking at the software side okay so here we are in home assistant and the first thing we're going to do is head over to Hasio and find our ESP home uh, add-on if you have never used ESP home before I have a video that goes through the the use of ESP home and how to set up your first sensor and I'll leave a link for that down in the description or if I remember I'll put a card that will flash up on the screen now uh, once we're in here we can go ahead and open the web UI and we're gonna go ahead and fill the details in in here so I'm gonna call this Office multi sensor. Okay, continue. Okay, and it's going to ask what uh, what we're using uh, to flash this onto. So I'm going to use the uh, D1 Mini, and it's going to ask us for our Wi-Fi details so I'm just gonna pause the video here while I type this in and I will blank these out as well okay so once you've got your uh, Wi-Fi information just go ahead and click continue and submit okay and now we can see we have our node here um, but if we go and click and edit you can see we get an error message so as I've said before the best way um, to to get this up and running is to go ahead and restart home assistant so i'll quickly show you how to do that in case you've not watched one of my other videos before so we're going to head back to hasio and system actually before we do that we're going to go to configuration general and we're just going to check our configuration before we restart and we can see our configuration is valid so hasio system and reboot this takes quite a while uh, to reboot, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video here and we'll pick it back up again once it has rebooted. Okay, now Hasio has restarted. We can go back to Dashboard and ESP Home. And then we're going to go ahead and open the web UI. And now we can see that instead of unknown here, it's saying that it's offline, which is correct because we've not plugged anything in yet. So for the multi-sensor, we're only just go we're going to use the one uh, D1 Mini and put all of the sensors onto the same D1 Mini instead of it being each sensor being on a separate one. So we're going to go ahead and click Edit. And we can see some of our information's already been populated here, including our uh, Wi-Fi information. I'm going to have to blur that out because my Wi-Fi password is there. Um, now you can go on to the D1 Mini. Uh, no, apologies, you can go on the ESP Home website uh, that I'll leave a link for down in the description and find information about each sensor and um, and populate 
this editor with that. However, if you're following along exactly, the other option you have is to head over to my GitHub repository um, that I'll leave a link again for down in the description and downloading uh, the code that I've already prepared. The only thing that you'll have to amend is your Wi-Fi information. So you can either uh, download this as a zip file or, or you can do what I'm going to do and just copy the information from the file and paste that into Home Assistant. Back over to Home Assistant and paste all this in here. So at the top, as we've already said, we have the information, so the name of the um, the name of the node, which is, it's it's coming up as Office Motion here, but we actually want it to be Office Multi-Sensor. Okay. Okay, other things we have in here. So we've got the pins to find for I square C here. Then we've got the some information about a binary sensor. So in that in this case, this is our motion sensor. Uh, here we have the setup for our temperature and humidity sensors. And you can see we've got that on pin uh, D2. And here we have the setup information for our uh, or light sensor, and this is the sensor that uses the I squared C uh, protocol. So once we've got that in here, we're just going to go ahead and click save, and we can close out of that. Next, we're going to click on the the three dots here, and we're going to go to compile. And this is going to have a think about it for a wee while. So we'll speed through this bit here while it uh, has a think. Okay, so here we can see that the uh, code has finished compiling and it says that it's uh, it's successfully compiled. So next we're just going to click download binary and we get the, the download file here. Now I'm just going to go ahead and, say, and move it to the desktop so it's nice and easy for us to find in the next step. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is open up the uh, ESP Home Flasher tool and to use this we're going to have to plug our device into our computer and typically I can't find a USB cable right now so give me a second and uh, I'll come back once I have one. Okay so here we are back I just stopped the video for a little while there because um, I've, I've got, this is a new computer that I'm using at the moment and it had to download the drivers for the USB serial adapter. But now that's happened, you can see I get COM port 6 here. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And then we're going to browse for that, uh, that file that we just downloaded and we know we saved that on the desktop. So we will head over to the desktop and it's here, office multicenter.bin and we'll open that up and click on flash ESP. Now this can take quite a long time so I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of fast forward through this bit here. Okay so it's, it was very easy to miss but it's actually uh, oops, it's actually done um, flashing up here and then what you get is a lot of information about the uh, what the device is up to and I'm going to skip through this because it's probably got some personal information in there but you can see here we are getting uh, readings back from the uh, light sensor here and the temperature and the humidity sensor here what I'm not seeing here is anything coming back from the motion sensor however I could be wrong. Um, we'll have a look at what it's saying in Home Assistant. So uh, we can go ahead and just close this now. And back in Home Assistant here, we can see that see that our sensor is shown as online. So if we head back to our overview page, um, we're going to make our new sensors visible 
uh, on here. So we're going to go to configure UI and we're going to edit this office box here. So we're going to scroll through and see if our new centers have shown up. So we've got our, this is our temperature sensor, so we'll add that. And this is our humidity, so we'll go ahead and add that. So the slight complication here is, is I have a few different um, temperature and humidity sensors because I've done this a couple of times before. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave that here because this is saying these are unavailable. So let's go and see if we can find out what the problem with that is. So we're going to look down here and see if we can find the devices or the sensors. Okay, I'm going to quickly pause the video here and see if I can come up with uh, what the problem is here. I think I'm probably confusing things with the naming that I'm using for these devices. Um, but just give me a few minutes and I will come back to you. Okay, so we're back here in the uh, edit file for the node itself. And I haven't tried this yet, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the names of each of these sensors. I think what's, uh, what's happening here is because I've already had these sensors attached individually and then I've done some uh, you know preparation for this video as well I've got too many sensors with similar names and it's starting to confuse things a little so I'm gonna go ahead and change the names of these sensors so for this motion sensor it's actually the only motion sensor I have so I'm gonna take off the office and I'm gonna put um, MS for multi sensor. Uh, so this is our multi sensor motion sensor. And then I'm going to do the same with the temperature and the humidity. And again, here with the light sensor. Um, we'll see how far we get with that. So I'm going to have to go ahead and save this and upload it again uh, using the flash utility, but you've already seen all of that. So I'll not go through the, all that again, but we'll uh, we'll come back uh, after that's uh, done and we'll see how far we've got. Okay, so here I am back in Home Assistant. So what I've done is I changed the names, uh, as you've seen, of the devices. Then I've compiled it, flashed it again, and then I have restarted Home Assistant and now I'm back in. You can see I've got this notification here to say that it has recognized a new device. So we can come up here and click check it out. And here is our uh, Office Multi Sensor. So we'll go ahead and click Configure and Submit. Now hopefully when we go and have a look in here, we can see that here we've got the binary sensor for MS motion sensor. We should also have we should also have somewhere temperature and humidity sensors. So here we've got the sensor MS temperature. And here we have temperature MS humidity. I'm just trying to spot the light sensor as well. Because it's the only thing we're currently missing. Here's the two old ones. Ah, here it is here. Uh, this is the light sensor. 
the device is actually sitting upside down at the moment, so the light sensor is showing zero. So all of our entities, all of our new entities are now showing in Home Assistant. So we can go back to our home screen and we'll edit this, uh, this card here again to show our devices. So I think on the top we'll have temperature. So let's find our temperature sensor. That one. And next we'll have humidity. Let's have the light level next. And then lastly, we'll have the motion sensor. Go ahead and click save. And you can see we're getting the values of these now. So you can see there's no motion detected in the room. If I wave my hand in front of the sensor, we can see there that motion has been detected. Uh, if I go ahead and turn the device over so the light level sensor is not facing down, you can see that we're getting a reading from the light level sensor as well. Okay, so here we have the multi-sensor uh, mostly put together. Now, I'm not going to lie, this is a mess. Um, and I've used a project box uh, here, but this is going to be replaced by a, a, th a custom 3D printed uh, enclosure. So I didn't want to take too much time uh, getting this uh, looking as good as it could. And I did use a rotary tool to kind of cut the holes in this. And yeah, it's pretty damn ugly, but it works. Um, so in here, we've basically we've got the uh, D1 Mini down in here, and then we've got the ground and the power for all of the devices uh, tied together. Then we've got the uh, the data pins from the devices going to the appropriate pins on the D1 Mini as set out in the, the code that we flashed to it. Um, I'll try and do some sort of diagram and I'll leave it down a link to it down in the description. Um, I've never really done a circuit diagram for upload before so we'll see how that goes. Um, but this is it and it's functioning. Um, so we'll pop its lid on and that will sit on my desk probably in that sort of orientation maybe this way so we get the light and uh, until we get a nice 3D case for it that's how it's going to look. Okay so it was kind of tricky to get everything in shot here uh, but you can see hopefully next to that blue wire at the bottom of the screen there that's the um, multi-sensor and then we can see on the screen under office there is the uh, readout from the devices. So if I move my hand towards the sensor hopefully you'll see that motion has been detected up here and a light level sensor if I put my hand over this, hopefully we'll see that number drop uh, to near zero. Okay, so there we go, that number has now dropped to zero. And if I take my hand back off it, it's detected motion again because I moved the device a little and uh, that number should go back up to the appropriate number for the light level in the room. Uh, sometimes it does just take a minute or two to catch up. Um, there we go. That's uh, that's caught up now. And uh, there we have it. That's the uh, multi sensor all up and running now. It's by far not the most elegant uh, solution at all. But as I say, this case is just temporary. But the uh, the electronics inside of it are, are how they will be in the uh, finished product. So if you found this video helpful at all, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like and comment. Thanks for watching.